I want to do a little bit of a reset here. This is Peter Clayton with Total Picture Radio. We're doing an innovation series vodcast and podcast with my friend Dan Merton, who is the founder of a company called LS Media, which is very much into developing websites and, and doing paid search marketing. He's, he's an expert in SEO and all the various forms of marketing that is used on the internet. So Dan, thanks again for uh, taking time to speak with me here. Uh, tell us a little bit about LS Media, what your services are, what, you know, uh, what a typical client engagement is for your organization. Uh, Peter, thanks for having me here, and um, it's great to be here. Um, at LS Media, we're completely focused on helping our clients drive sales revenue or generate leads from all of the online channels. Um, so either if, if you're starting out and you have none from your online channel, uh, we'll, we'll help from the ground up. Or uh, if, you're, if it's already working and running, we want to help you add to it. Um, and we use all of the things that you and I have talked about in the past in depth, like paid search, search engine optimization, display uh, marketing uh, and advertising. Um, we, we do a lot of social media campaigns and a lot of email marketing as well. Okay, t talk to us a little bit about retargeting. This is some, an area that I, I don't think a lot of people know that much about, but has become extremely popular and powerful, and uh, we talked a little bit about it in the previous segment we did. Um, so you might want to take a look at that. If, uh, if you haven't watched part one of our interview with Dan, take a look at that first part so you, you get up to speed on what we're talking about here with, with retargeting. But tell us, uh, uh, again, briefly, you know, how a retargeting campaign works. And uh, I'm, I'm especially interested in what you were describing as search retargeting. Sure. Uh, retargeting is simple, and everyone has seen this um, if you don't already know what it is, but this is where a company will, let me back up, you'll go to a website and you'll, you'll uh, look at Toyota's website and um, you'll look at lease rates for a new car, as an example. Once you leave, Toyota will follow you around the web and show you ads, and this is not coincidental, this is intentional, um, and they don't they, they don't know who you are personally. All they've done is track your computer. Um, and it's, it's, it's on, on, on one hand, uh, it's, it can be creepy or uh, people think it's annoying. But on the other hand, the reason why so many corporations and, and companies and websites do this is it's effective. It really works uh, to, to help people, help keep your brand top of mind as, as your, your visitor that you had invested in mm -hmm. um, surfs around the web. Right. And, and potentially looks at your competitors. You, you want them not to forget your brand as well. So you'll see ads for, in our Toyota example, you'll see Toyota ads as you go to AOL.com and Yahoo and CNN or ESPN or anywhere you might go on the web. It's not specific to the website you're on. Right. Think of it as a campaign where the advertiser, the brand, is trying to get at a very specific small audience that was right. already on their website. Right. So f for instance, if I'm... Uh, looking at the the new Canon uh, camera that's about to come out sure. and then uh, you know I'm on Canon's website looking at this new 5D that looks pretty terrific and then I go to New York Times chances are I might see a Canon ad on the Yeah New York and Times even website. more specifically you may see the exact model you were looking at in the ad right. that's you know that's how this has evolved where you may see and if you were on Amazon looking at, at a product, you might see a grouping of products from that category within the ad. And you can sometimes even scroll through the products in the ad and click on one. And so it's, retargeting is, is not only effective at the broad level, but it's also evolved to become very specific and product-based or you know, based on what you are actually doing on the website. I, I want to talk a little bit uh, with you about email campaigns because you know anybody that does any research on this and, and again back to this whole thing about lead generation and B2B sales, um, email is still one of the most effective tools that's used out there. I have a, uh, a, a little newsletter that you know I only have a few thousand subscribers who use it. Um, and you know, I get like a twelve to fifteen percent click-through rate, which I I find very sad. <laughs> that it's, only twelve to fifteen percent of people off from normal. That's that's pretty average. <laughs> don't don't beat yourself up here. Uh, it's, it's, that's a good. That's 
listen, there's a range of what, what's normal, but that's, that's in it. That, that's in your, the normal open rate right. range of 10 to 30 percent, you know. So, so that's... Um, what are some things I could do to get more towards the 30% range than the 12 sure. to 15% o- range? Open, open rates are affected by the time of the day of the week that you send mm-hmm. your message, the time of day that you send your message, and the subject line of the message. Are, are there particular days or times of the day that is more effective? Yeah, and, and you'd, you'd have to research this for your industry and audience within retail. The traditional days, and this may have changed by now, but the traditional days were always thought of as Tuesdays and Thursdays. The problem with that is now everyone knows that. So if you bum, everyone gets bombarded with all their messages on Tuesdays and Thursdays, it's no longer effective. But what's, what's happened is some email marketing has become transactional in, uh, in the sense that you left something in a shopping cart uh, and a store will email you to remind you that you right. put something in a shopping cart. So that's a, that's a form of email marketing which is actually time dependent on what you did and when you did it and it's more personalized and they're going to show you a picture of what you had in your cart yeah but for the so for someone like you though you'd want to look at when um you'd want to test your subject lines Mm -hmm. as i think you do um and and you want to um you also want to make sure you're sending think about who your audience is and when when they're tuned in you don't want to get buried in their inbox um you probably want to show up when when they're at work or you know when when they're best suited to be you know uh, interacting with your content mm-hmm. yeah I use I use Mailchimp and so um, again back to this interview I did with uh, Russell glass at LinkedIn one of the things he said to me was you know any marketer out there needs to be do, be doing a to B testing which is something I had never done and and uh, on the Mailchimp platform uh, you have the ability you know, to do A-B testing with your subject lines or whatever. And so I've started to do that now. And it's very easy to set up and it costs, it doesn't cost anything. Um, and, and, and so basically the way it works is 20% of my list gets, uh, you know, uh, one headline at, or another headline. So 10% here and 10% there. Then MailChimp looks at the click-through rates and whichever campaign had the more hits is the one that the other 80% of my list gets, yep. right? Yep. Uh, which makes a lot of sense. And it's all, and it is helping to increase my click-through rates, right? Um, and the other thing that MailChimp does, um, which I'm sure most of these other solutions that like MailChimp do, you know, the constant contacts of the world, is it will suggest the best time to send my campaign. Sure. Um, which I find interesting because it's usually late in the day, like 4 p.m., 6 p.m., or something like that, which I would kind of counterintuitive to what I have, would have thought would be a, an ideal time to send out a B2B campaign. Sure, I would agree with you, and I, and I don't... I don't know a lot about the algorithm that they use to, to make that decision, mm-hmm. um, but but I'm, I'm sure there you know there's something to it that they look at. Um, but but the other you know one of the cool things that as you mentioned Mailchimp and, and many of the other providers do now is they allow for you to create um, a series of emails through automation, mm-hmm. um, meaning someone signs up for the total picture list and you send them an introductory email, but you can then select a schedule. Three days later, they, they get another piece of great content that you created. Uh, they, and another three days to a week later, maybe they get another piece of content. This is a form of engagement and nurturing mm-hmm. that over the course of a month, a new subscriber might see five to ten emails from you, and then it slows down or tapers off after that, and they just get put on the regular uh, mailing list. But it helps them helps you form a relationship more quickly. If you're selling something, it helps you nurture that lead or potential sale mm-hmm. um, at the same time. And the great thing is you set this up once and it runs automatically, uh, and, but you can tweak each message, add messages, take messages away, change the timing of them as they go out. Um, and they tend to be very effective at nurturing a lead, something for like a B2B company where there's high consideration. You, you want to be, you, you want to stay top of mind like you would with retargeting, but this is just a form of relationship building, really. Right, right. Um, so we've talked uh, a little bit about AdWords campaigns. We've talked a little bit about Facebook campaigns. Let's talk about LinkedIn because that's a very important platform for most of the listeners to my show. 
who are in HR and recruiting and vendors who sell into those markets, uh, LinkedIn is the big daddy for us. It really is. And, you know, in my own personal experience, Dan, when I, you know, when I use, you know, I, I promote my latest shows on LinkedIn, I get far more traffic from that than I do like on Twitter or Facebook. Sure, yeah. Right. Which makes sense because yeah. I'm going after a professional business audience. Yep. Yep. Um, I agree. And I think, I think for in your industry, LinkedIn, excuse me, LinkedIn is an incredibly powerful tool. Uh, it allows us to get to people and understand, you know, the, the profile of an organization, the makeup, the people in an organization much quicker and, and better than we ever could before, right? So what, how, what, how does that help? I mean, there's a few ways, I think. Um, we've, we've done some advertising on LinkedIn. It allows you to advertise toward uh, people in specific roles. Uh, do you want a C-level person? Do you want an IT professional at the director level? Are you looking for, um, you know, uh, middle management uh, in a certain segment? Or it's not segment, but um, maybe in an industry. Uh, so, you know, I can, I can create specific campaigns where I can get to an industry, a group of people in an industry, or a group of people at a certain career level, which is efficient. Mm -hmm. to say the least. Uh, the other thing... And demographic, that, too. Uh, you know, it, it, from a... Uh, and as a, for us, for LS Media, we use LinkedIn as a prospecting tool. When we want to work with a potential company, we see a fit to help them with marketing. Uh, we can immediately go to LinkedIn, figure out who works at the company. Uh, we use a number of browser plugins and tools to try and figure out how to get in contact with them, how, you know, what their email address convention might be. Um, and all of a sudden, LinkedIn helps us in a very timely, effective way figure out who the decision maker is. Mm -hmm. You know, who, who usually for us, if it's a brand we want to work with, it's, it's a, we want to get the, the CMO, director of marketing, director of digital, someone like that on the phone. Or at least get, their, get an email to them directly. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, for, from, for us, we, we use it that way, right. directly. Right. Um, but buying ads there, I think, could be effective. Uh, for your audience um, in certain ways. Right. Yeah, I, I actually have an interview coming up with my friend uh, Donato Diorio, who uh, was the founder of a company called Broadlook and now is the CEO of a company called Ringlead. And they have a tool that's called Capture, which is a Chrome plugin. So if you're on LinkedIn, uh, you click on the Capture button. Um, that All of that person's information will then be served up in a separate window. You click on another button and it'll go out there and search and find their email addresses and all this other information about them. And then if you use Salesforce, you can just uh, uh, automatically import all of that information right into your Salesforce tool. So, yeah, that's, I mean, and that's a good example of the kind of thing. Yeah. Like I mentioned, we're, we're, I think the thing we use is called Reportive. Mm -hmm. And it's a it's a it's a browser LinkedIn plugin. bot LinkedIn bot well, reported. Yeah. Okay, so I didn't know that. Yeah, uh, but that that makes it easy to um, understand that you've got the right person and the right address. Right. Uh, yeah, Reportive is a great tool, and I, I, I've used it for a long time, especially in Gmail, because um, you know if if you're trying to decide or figure out what somebody's email address, you can do a test using Reportive, right, right? right. in in Gmail. And if if it's the right email, their picture comes up and their email is there, right. and you know you've made a a, a match. They've got all the confidence in the world when you press the send button, right? Yeah, yep. exactly. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, that's 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 interesting. Um, but that that does help us quite a bit um, from you know for for our what we need to do. You know, I've talked to a lot of people um, about Twitter, yeah. okay, and people who have a huge social media. Uh, footprint mm -hmm. um, and they say I just don't see an ROI with, yeah with Twitter I, I just don't see it and so they don't you know they might they might have an assistant or something tweeting out stuff every once in a while but they basically don't use it I think Twitter is a, ca a more casual tool you, you know um, there's been a lot of talk lately about how Twitter is a better real-time search engine than Google to find out what's going on Right, from a news from a news perspective, or breaking you know, news. what breaking or, or, news, or, what's going on, or even on. Um, finding something to do if you're in a large city, where, where you know, where are people, what shows that they are, mm -hmm. are at, and that sort of thing. I'm just not sure I see the the business application, and I'm sure there's certain businesses or or industries or, or kinds of companies where Twitter 
provides an excellent advertising opportunity. Well, a lot of companies are using Twitter to put, put out job ads. You know? Yeah, but, but then again, you know, I think, is it, I have a client that, uh, uh, that is a trade school, and they are, you know, it's, it's, they advertise toward, it's, they're, part of their audience are people who are unemployed. Uh, because they, they oh, and, this is the, uh, the the bartender bartender school? training school. Yeah, they um, you know we we advertise to a lot of a lot of people are looking to do this, and mm -hmm. it's very intent driven. It's very keyword driven, uh, and but but also is it expensive to buy like bartender school? Is that an inexpensive keyword? Sure, but yeah. it's still worth it. Right. Um, we're so able what to is a what is a click through cost in so bartender school? Uh, so uh, let me think of an example there. Maybe, maybe you'll spend four bucks. For a click, but you'll convert, you know, at ten percent. So now I've got a lead for forty dollars, and bartending school costs several hundred. So I've just got to make sure now that they sign up in between. So, suffice it to say, they're they're adding incremental students to their enrollment through this that they wouldn't have had. Right. So so long as we can deliver a, a, a student. Uh, at a fair price, mm -hmm. keep adding, keep adding, the dollars make right. sense. But the reason I brought it up was we're buying ads and getting a great ROI on job boards because there's plenty of people who are looking for a job mm -hmm. that are in a position where they're in between jobs and they think they need training or, or mm -hmm. maybe they do and they, you know, they think this is a good idea and they find it and they like the idea so they go for it. Um, and I think you and I spoke about uh, Snag a Job. That right. was one job board where we had a lot of success. Um, buying ads. Well, that's really interesting because I keep hearing that display advertising is dead, that nobody ever clicks on a display ad. Yeah, well, <laughs> and that's right? interesting because look, we, we all see quite literally hundreds of them a day, right? right? So how many could you click on even if you were interested? You'd never get anything done. However, the display ad ecosystem is alive and well. And granted, all right, we're moving towards things like native advertising. But, but for what does that mean, native advertising? Native advertising is the kind of ads that get integrated into content. So it looks okay. more like native content on a website. Right. You'll see this on... Uh, a, lot of, a lot of news sites. Yeah. News na native advertising. Yep. Yeah. Yahoo, mobile. Um, I've noticed a lot of it on. Mm -hmm. But... but CNN uses native advertising uh, a so lot. Many, so many companies are using native now uh, b because... And, and the label it is sponsored. Uh, right. Ads. But it's... Since you're reading this article, you may be interested in this. Yes, yes. It's, it's that kind of stuff. Right. So it's designed yeah. to look more like the content of like a website. News. Like right. news content. With, with, the, with the intent that, 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 that someone will engage with it um, like they would the content on the site. However, um, with display, back to that for a moment, display has, is, it, there's, it, you've probably heard of programmatic bidding or real-time bidding, RTB. Mm -hmm as a technology. In the ad tech world, this is growing tremendously. This started as a way for publishers, every kind of website that publishes content, to sell remnant inventory that was left over. Um, and it's, it's an efficient um, auction system that creates a market for all this ad inventory and sells it, it sells what otherwise would be unsold inventory to uh, buyers. And this started out where direct response advertisers would buy this inventory. But now the, the providers of this sort of technology have really turned it into the way, since it is so much more efficient, the way we buy advertising. So explain to us exactly what programmatic bidding is. So and how it works. here's, and, and you ask 50 people, you get 50 different answers, but here's my answer. Okay. You, the way it works is I can, with, with the right software and platform in place, I can get an ad onto 20,000 websites in five minutes at a specified price that I want to pay. And I don't get guaranteed inventory, but I will inevitably win auctions. I can, I can go out and look and say, I want to advertise on all travel sites, or I want to advertise on all job sites. And I can push my ads out to them. And then I can begin to optimize and look at conversion rates, click-through rates, and over the course of a campaign... So which job boards are effective yes, for you, right? exactly. So, and, 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 the, and the world has changed. It used to be 10 years ago, Banner ads cost a lot of money, the, and, but now with RTB, it's, it's an auction, so the market determines the price, and the prices come way down. So scale and efficiency has gone up, and prices have come down, and the ability to optimize has gotten better. 
So this has all created a situation for advertisers where it's a better place to be. And again, it's, what's so important about all of this stuff is it's all trackable. You, you can really go in and see, I spent you know, $3,000 on this campaign and my return was $20,000, so I'm gonna go spend another $3,000. Right? Exactly, exactly. And you know, it's, it's, about, it's about understanding that there, there is now a much better process for optimization and that your campaign should be optimized such that it's sustainable and you mm -hmm. can keep doing it and it is working for you. Yeah, I did this really interesting interview with a guy whose name is Nick Carlson and he wrote the book uh, about Marissa Meyer and Yahoo. Um, and you know, in, in doing the research in, in this, uh, on his book, you know, at one time Yahoo had an opportunity to buy Google. Right. way back in the early That's days, right, yeah. you know. Uh, but th very quickly, as Google started to scale, they realized that the bigger they got, the more money they made. So the more money they made, they just kept on making more and more money. And it was one of these things that just kept growing and growing and growing and growing. And so they, they realized very quickly that this was not something that they wanted to sell because the more money they spent, actually, the more money they made, right? Yeah. And so that's sort of the kind of thing you're, you're talking about here with, with, this, you know, with these programmatic campaigns. You can really figure out you know, how to incrementally increase your revenue if, if you're going to the right uh, resources mm -hmm. and, and with the right message, right? Sure, yeah. And, and I think we look at anything we do for a client, we don't want to be in the business of helping you with your awareness or your branding. We want to be in the business of helping you build campaigns that produce a positive ROI, right? Mm -hmm. we want, because we want to keep doing it for you. We want, to keep, we want your ad dollar. We want you to keep spending with us. And we want to keep showing you, uh, providing value, right? So mm -hmm. we're, we're focused on that side of the business, the performance side. Uh, and there's plenty of agencies that will help you with those other things, but that's, that's not what we, we feel like our strong point, our core competency is being able to return value from keyword campaigns, from SEO, from display advertising, from retargeting, and show it to you, mm -hmm. um, and quantify what we spent and what our what our return was. What do you recommend? Uh, you know, small or medium sized businesses or startups uh, look for in hiring a digital marketing company to work with them, to help build their SEO, to help do uh, the kinds of campaigns that we've been talking about in this interview? Uh, Peter, I think, it's, I think it's incredibly important that you, number one, trust who you're working with. Uh, you should interview a lot of agencies. You should get to know them a little bit, understand how they work, how you think they'd work with you. Do the personalities match up between your people and their people? Um, also, how long do they work with their typical, how long is their typical client engagement? Um, and I would ask for specific examples, and I would call them on, I would ask for those references and, and call and understand that. Um, understand exactly what you're getting for your money in terms of hours and ad spend, what the breakdown is. Are they, you know, is, is their monthly fee, does that include your ad spend? Does it not? What, you know, what, what percentage goes to what? Because a lot of times those things are opaque, that you're not, you're, you're being sold something, but you, but you don't see the breakdown of what's happening. Um, and also understanding who's, um, if they create something for you, whose intellectual property is it? That should be spelled out in a document because it's very important. Uh, we've seen examples where there's, um, not with us, but, but with agencies where there's a discrepancy over who owns the intellectual property once the relationship is over. Um, so those are some of the things that come to mind. Um, and, and I would, you know, I would also ask for performance examples. What, you know, what, what did you, show me what you spent for a client, show me what you got for it, and show me how you did it. And if they're not forthcoming with that, then, you know, ask why, Under, understand why. Um, I, I'd say those are the most important things. Dan Merton is the founder of a company called LS Media in Westport, Connecticut. And Dan, thank you so much for taking time to speak with us today on Total Picture Radio. It's really been uh, great and informative to have this conversation. Thanks again for having me, Peter. It's been great. This innovation series episode of Total Picture is brought to you by HR Marketer. With HR Marketer, you'll share great content, pick the best hashtags, speak at conferences, secure analyst briefings, exhibit at the best events, and quickly get in front of the right people. Use the link on Dan's show page for a free online demo of HR Marketer and a special offer for Total Picture listeners. This is Peter Clayton. 
Thanks for tuning in.